Well, formally my name is, is Catherine Eaton, but I go by Cappy. Well, I first heard about the League of Women Voters when I was uh, the women's editor on the Rochester Post Bulletin in Rochester, Minnesota, uh, not too long after I graduated from University of Minnesota with a BA in journalism. I was a reporter in California and then I took a job uh, on the Post Bulletin and there, uh, one of my jobs as women's editor was to uh, find out and be involved with and tell people about the women's groups in the community. And so uh, the League of Women Voters was one of those groups. And so um, I got acquainted with uh, what kinds of issues they followed and uh, I went to their meetings. And that's the first time I heard about it. When um, we moved from St. Paul, Minnesota, after I was married to Eugene, Oregon, uh, I, I immediately transferred my membership from the American Association of University Women. And then when I had my first child in 1953, uh, I needed some more civic involvement, if you will, and, and some issues discussion. And so I joined the League of Women Voters when our first child uh, was about five months old. So I joined the League in 1954, and I've been uh, an active member ever since. My first job in the League, uh, almost as soon as I joined, uh, was to become a member of the Voter Service Committee because we were getting ready for the May primary. So I helped put together information about the ballot measures, and I started writing about uh, what the League was doing for our local Argus, which, which is our uh, newsletter for members. And I've been writing for the Argus ever since. So that's a long time. From 1954 on, I uh, would say I've been a pretty active member. Uh, I was voter service chair, and then I became um, the vice president of the local League of Women Voters, which at that time was the Eugene League of Women Voters. Um, I was vice president, and then I became local league president in 1963 and uh, went on the state board um, in about 1967 and uh, was very active um, at the state board level uh, with um, action and that's where I found my niche, if you will, with the League was uh, participating and being very much involved with both arms of the League um, in terms of voter education uh, for a long time, I've been involved with the Speakers Bureau uh, in our local league, uh, but also discussed state issues uh, around the state and uh, have uh, helped with the research and development of the pros and cons on uh, ballot measures, which are printed in our voter's guide. We do a local voter's guide in Lane County, so I was also voter service chair in Lane County. Um, at the national, uh, at the state league, um, I have done a number of, been involved with a number of studies. Uh, some of them um, that I recall, uh, we did a coastal, Oregon Coastal Management Study. We were very concerned about the idea of offshore drilling, and so we wanted to get a position that would give us the ability to speak to that particular issue. And I've also been involved with more than one elections uh, methods and issues study in the league, also with uh, redistricting and uh, with initiative reform. Oregon has a very active initiative schedule, I should guess is the way I'd put it. Uh, Oregon was the first 
active state with initiative, uh, which is direct democracy. It allows the citizens to uh, enact legislation. And we passed our initiative law in 1902 and have had a very active uh, process in people bringing initiatives to, to the voting public. Uh, perhaps one of the most interesting ones to the League is the fact that we, after six tries, we got women's suffrage via the initiative in uh, 1912. So that, that sort of uh, preceded the League of Women Voters by about eight years, but we started our, our state league um, in the 1920s after there was national suffrage. So I, in my checkered career um, of almost, what, 1954 to 2011, um, that's a fair number of years to be a member of the League of Women the Voters. I'm still very active. I chair um, our, our action committee in Lane County. I've been chair for quite a long time, trying to persuade other people to uh, become chair, but I haven't uh, been able to persuade them. I think I'm going to have a, a co-chair this, this time around. I've been on the, <coughs> on the action team for the State League for a very long time. And my portfolio is governance. And that includes elections and ethics, um, initiative reform. I do women's issues. I do higher education issues. And the League got me into mental health issues uh, a very long time ago in Lane County in 1964 when the state, uh, well, when the federal government passed a mental health centers bill and that required that every county have a mental health center. And in Lane County, they decided that it would be the county commissioners who would be in charge of that. And our league had done a mental health study for children. And so I was asked to serve on the first advisory committee for mental health in Lane County. And I was part of that until 1988. But in the meantime, I got involved also at the state level, and I still am. I sit on two state commissions. One is an advisory commission for adult services um, in what is now our Addictions and Mental Health Division for the state government uh, under the Department of Human Services. And I also am on a, an advisory committee which oversees the trust fund uh, for mental health housing. Well, it's always, it's always an interesting opportunity and challenge to testify at the Oregon legislature. Sometimes the committee is made up of individuals who uh, do not hold the league uh, in very good stead for a variety of reasons, and so they may or may not listen to what you say when you identify yourself as a member of the league. But for the most part, uh, we are respected at the legislature. And re depending really, unfortunately, on the partisan division of the legislature, uh, sometimes the issues that we are very, that we feel are very important uh, are not given that same kind of recognition by the legislature. So, for instance, when we went through a period of time when the legislature was under the control of the Republican Party, that was 1991 through um, 2005, 
uh, many of the issues that we were concerned about, initiative reform, ethics reform, election reform, land use planning, uh, health care, um, those were not issues that were being discussed in the way we supported uh, for the League. When the legislature was, uh, the Senate was taken over in 2005 by the Democrats, our good government allies uh, have been able to um, accomplish quite a, quite a number of the things that we were working toward. We have um, changed the initiative process, we believe, for the better. Uh, we have helped in, uh, develop a better ethics commission. Um, we uh, believe that the, uh, the process of governing is improving, and we feel that uh, the access issues, that is, access to public hearings, and our ability to testify and to be part of working groups has very much improved um, during the last three biennia. So that um, it's been very satisfactory to be part of that and to be in a much more open attitude um, at the legislature. In 1954, most of the members of of our league in Lane County were young mothers like I am. We, we, were, we were young, we were energetic, we were really concerned about um, how our children, go, the kind of life our children were going to have, and we were, we were very much interested in making sure that uh, our schools were well funded and that our government was accessible and that uh, government was at all levels, was listening to what the citizens were saying. And that's been a mixed bag over these 50 or 60 years. Some of the things that we looked at have not changed. We still want to make sure that citizens are educated about the issues that come up, and that's still a mission of ours, that our, that our election system is fair we have vote by mail, and that's very important, and it's increased our, our voter participation. So public participation, the ability of the public to have access, the ability of the public to be informed, those, and, and our ability as a league to help them with that, that mission hasn't changed. And you have to remember uh, an old adage that, uh, one of my mentors, who was state league president a long time ago, said in answer to that question was, it doesn't make any difference how much impact you have or you feel you have, but if you don't try to make an impact, there won't be any. So you don't look at whether or not you're going to move the mountain you just want to at least scrape away some of the, some of the stone and the moss and get, get your opinion put there so that they can think about it. And I, I felt that that was a, a really good piece of advice to, to anybody is that if you don't try to make a difference, you won't be able to make a difference.